story time. So a lot of y'all have been asking for more story times on my racist principle. So ask and you shall receive. A lot of schools have this policy on no PDA in school, which means public display of affection because y'all be nasty. Mm. Don't lie. Don't lie. So I had a boyfriend freshman year. Don't want to talk about it. We all do stuff that we regret in life. Anyways. Oh, no. My parents didn't know I had a boyfriend because if they knew, mm. I had really protective parents because, you know, Hispanic parents don't play. So y'all know this racist principal had it out for me. She always was coming for my throat, for my life. Like I told her once, she must have thought I was so beautiful. She wanted to see me in her office every day. Every day was a detention, suspension, everything. She had no chill. So this one day, school was over, over, done. The bell rang. Everybody's out, getting in their car. We are outside of the premises. So you know what boyfriends do. We were in the parking lot. He comes closer to kiss me. As his lips are going to touch mine. As he's leaning over to give me a kiss. His lips barely touch my lips. Like a peck, like, like I think it was more like an air kiss. She comes up from behind a bush or something. I don't know where she was hiding at. Keep in mind, we are in the parking lot. Outside of school, it is done. Done, se acabó, se terminó. School is over for the rest of the week. This is Friday, goodbye, we're not gonna see you. He jumps out like hot, caught you. Like if what we were doing was like the worst thing in the world, we ain't gonna talk about what they were doing in that school. We ain't gonna talk about what they did in that locker room. Mm, let's not talk about what they did in theater rooms. She's like, come here, come to my office. You know that what you're doing is so illegal. Wait till your parents find out. Does your parents know you're over here making out and slobbering on each other? What? What? She took us to her office. Did not call his parents. Oh, but she did call mine. And she said, she called my parents and had the audacity to say, you have to come pick up your daughter because she's not allowed to leave because she was making out with her boyfriend touching on each other in front of everybody in the school during school hours i even got complaints from students this is beyond our expectations in our grade school what what touching on each other making out and during school hours complaints are you dumb excuse me ma'am are you are you okay bro damage had already been done my dad got off of work early to come pick me up because this crazy woman said I was doing this. Well, that was my funeral. And then she tells me, Ooh, your dad sounds so mad. I can't wait to meet him. Oh, and you're going to get three days of detention. Y'all still don't think she was racist? Oh, oh. I took myself on a movie date to see In the Heights and I went to the movies one other time this year and it was amazing because I just went in and I sat in the middle of a completely empty theater and if anybody did buy a ticket I was told that they were required to choose a seat that was at least six seats away from me at all times and I was like this is amazing this is how movies should be all the time but now people are coming back to the movie theaters and they don't know how to act anymore and it's pandemonium i went in and there were some ladies sitting one of them was in my seat and i just thought that's fine i'll just sit a few seats down we'll be good we were not all good because this lady came in with a bunch of kids and i thought oh how cute they're having a family day and then they walked straight to me and i thought oh no and she said you're in my seat and i was like i'm sorry those ladies were in my seat and so i just sat here but i'll go i'll go talk to them it'll be fine and so i went over to the ladies and i said hey um you're actually sitting in my seat i was just gonna sit down there anyway but then this lady came and she wanted her seat so um could, could you please just scooch down so I could sit in my seat? And they just stared at me. They did not say anything. And I showed them my ticket and I was like, see, I, my seat's G7. Um, and you're sitting in G7. So if you guys could just scoot down, it would be, it would be great. Cause then we'd all have our seats. And they kept staring at me. It was this weird stare off. And all I could think was like, oh, I just wanted to come to the movie theater and sit in a dark, cold room and eat my giant pickle and then deal with the gastrointestinal repercussions of eating said giant pickle in private. But here I am squabbling over a seat. And some of you might be thinking, why don't you just move to a different row? The answer is I paid an extra $4 to sit in a recliner and that was the only row with recliners. And $4 is a big investment. That goes far at Taco Bell. Finally, one of the Karens just kind of glanced 
over to this one seat that was in between the family and in between them. And I thought, fine, I'll just sit there. And so I'm sitting in between them and the cute little four-year-old that was on my one side couldn't keep up with the movie. And so she was talking the whole time, very loudly. And I was just like, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. And I was judging that four-year-old because she had an entire bucket of cotton candy that she wasn't even eating. And I did consider moving at that point, but I thought, what if the mom knows that I'm moving because I'm annoyed with her child? Heaven forbid I do anything that could potentially maybe hurt a stranger's feelings. Then the four-year-old started eating popcorn with her mouth open. And I was like, nope, nope. That is my limit. So I moved a few rows back into the plebeian seating and ate my giant pickle, which decided to make an early exit about an hour later. And I made the whole theater smell like a ferret cage. And when the lady sitting in my seat looked over her shoulder at me, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Is the smell wafting? Good. I've been waving it at you with my mask. Story time. So back in the day, me and my cousin grew up like siblings, like brother and sister, like two birds in a pot. This was years ago when we were about to start middle school. So I don't know about you, but I never grew up rich. This wasn't no Kylie Jenner, Kim Kardashian. We ain't had that type of money. So we had to do what we had to do. So my mom was like, you know what? Let's go buy you new shoes for school. So we pull up er, to Payless. If you don't know nothing about Payless, then you don't know what the struggle is. Payless is exactly what the name says, a pay less. Then your shoes be sticking like three weeks later. Anyways, so this was the time in middle school when everybody wanted to wear Jordans and like Nikes. So I come to Payless and I see something that looks like Jordans. You know, it had that jumping man trying to dunk that hoop. Me being so naive, I was like, ooh, Jordans. So I tell my cousins, which ones do you think I should get? He said, ooh, those white Jordans gonna look fire on you. Bro, I was so dumb and I took those shoes. Like for part two. Recap, so I got these shoes that kind of look like Jordans because I thought they were Jordans at Payless. My cousin told me they were Jordans, so I decided to get them. He's like, ooh, you gonna look so fire in those shoes. I get my happy self to the counter. I tell my mom, I'm ready, buy my shoes. I'm so happy I'm holding on to the box of shoes. I'm like, yes, tomorrow I'm gonna look so good at school. On Monday, when we're getting ready to go to school, this dude, this dude tells me, <laughs> you thought those ain't Jordans, those are Shaq shoes. You gonna look whack. You got some broke dad shoes. Let me show y'all how those shoes look. Like that. I know. Bro, I felt so dumb. So betrayed. I put my trust in him to help me choose some shoes. And he for real gonna make me look so dumb. He roasted me for the rest of the year. One night I was walking home to my apartment and I saw my friend's trunk open and so I texted them like a good human being and said hey man I just walked past your car and it looks like your trunk is open and he texted me back in less than 60 seconds and said oh no that guy must have gotten out I knew that I shouldn't have used the off-brand duct tape and I couldn't decide in that moment if the next right move was to block his number or asked to be his girlfriend. I didn't, I didn't know.